You're listening to Focused, episode 54. Welcome to Focused, a photography business and blogging podcast hosted by Paul and Cinnamon Wolf. Join us as we chat with industry leaders and creative small business owners about their personal stories, actionable strategies, valuable lessons learned, and most importantly, how to build businesses we can be proud of by staying focused. Hmm. Hey, Uh, Annie. Hey. What are you doing? Oh, hey, I was looking for the uh, CDRs. Do you know where those are What? You know, the CDRs are put in your disk drive. (laughs) I can't even find the disk drive. (laughs) What? Yeah, I'm trying to burn some discs from these photos from your last photo. I'm trying to help you out. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, it's not 1997 anymore. What? How do you deliver all your photos? <laughs> no one to uses your discs. What? what? Discs? Come on. Yeah. No. No? Well, how do you get your photos to your clients in it? Honey, <laughs> we'll use shoot proof. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Are you looking for the most powerful, flexible, and beautiful way to showcase your stunning images and transfer them to your clients? Shootproof allows you to show off your work with beautiful online galleries and slideshows that match your brand and style. Clients can receive their downloads quickly and easily, or they can purchase high-quality prints directly from their gallery. Wow your clients even more by offering beautiful custom apps so they can show off your gorgeous work to all their friends and family with one simple click. If you're looking for simple-to-use professional sales tools and stunning client galleries, you've found all of that and more in ShootProof. For a limited time, ShootProof is offering focused listeners a 20% discount off their first paid month. Use offer code FOCUSED at checkout. Must be 29 on your prior register. <laughs> Those actually... <laughs> Must use prior to 1231.17. Legal jargon, legal jargon, legal jargon. <laughs> Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Focus Podcast. I'm Cinnamon. And I'm Paul. And we have a really good episode today. We do. Super excited about it. Um, I think it's something a lot of listeners are going to be super interested in because today we are talking with Lynn Pernell from Lynn Pernell Photography about um, what it's like basically to run uh, photography and videography business kind of together all in one and basically like what that means and how you might think about you know putting both together if you're already doing you know one right now um and she's got a lot of great stuff to say about it so lynn welcome to the show thank you so much thank you for having me yeah absolutely so um before we get started because we have a lot to cover today you have a lot of really good information for us um can you just give us a little bit more in-depth information about who you are and where you're from and what you do All right. Yes. So I'm Lynn Pernil. I'm based in Jersey City, New Jersey, and I'm the owner of Lynn Pernil Photography. So quick little fun fact about my name. My first name is Lynn, L-I-N. So that's actually the Chinese spelling. I was born in Hong Kong. So my parents wanted to give me a Chinese first name. That's so cool. And then my, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And then my middle name is Pernil, P-E-R-N-I-L-L-E. And that's a super common Danish name. So I'm actually from Denmark. That's where my whole family's from. And yeah, so my name kind of sums up my whole background in a nutshell. That's awesome. So yeah, I love that. kind of from all over the place. Yeah, that's so cool. (laughs) Um, So in terms of my business, so I know a lot of people, especially like in the photo industry and creative entrepreneurs, kind of arrive at where they are through a windy path. Mm -hmm. But mine was actually pretty linear and intentional. I got started all the way back in high school. So I went to a really awesome school called Communications High School. Oh. It's a selective mm-hmm, selective honors vocational high school and it's theme based. So I got to take a whole bunch of photo classes and I found out really early on that I love photography. So I got my first DSLR or fancy camera as I called it back then. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I feel like everyone calls it that. Yep. Um, in 2007. And then I started getting more serious with it, started booking more, you know, paying jobs and thinking of photography as more of a career than a hobby. So when it came time to apply to college, I knew I wanted to major in photography. And I also decided to minor in business. And then in 2011, very smart choice. (laughs) Yes, I forget who gave me that advice, but that was like the best advice I was ever given. Very good advice. Yeah. 
I almost feel like I wish I double majored in photo and business, right. but anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so in 2011, I shot my first wedding and I really loved it. I in, initially, when I started doing photo, I didn't intend on ending at weddings. I thought I was going to do portraits or fashion or something, but mm-hmm. I realized that weddings just combined everything I loved about photography. So there's the details, there's portraiture, there's like the whole photojournalism aspect. And of course, I love the excitement and all the energy and all the emotions that come along with the wedding. So ever since then, I decided weddings were going to be kind of my focus. So by 2013, I had been shooting freelance and kind of unofficially for seven years. So at that point, I was totally sure this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to have my own photography business. So in April 2013, I incorporated my LLC and then I graduated college next year and then was finally able to dedicate full time to my business. And yeah, that's where I am now. That's Dang. amazing. That's great. So you that's did photography really cool. the whole time. So now you, <laughs> you do video in, in addition to photography now? Yes. So I've been doing video actually for as long as I've been doing photo. So yeah. as I said, my high school was theme based. So it was all communications uh, types of fields. So in addition to photo classes, I also took a bunch of video classes. I actually technically took my first video class before photo. So it's funny. I consider, yeah, I consider myself like a photographer first, videographer second, but I actually technically learned video first. Um, So one of my first DSLRs was the, I'm sure it's like crazy obsolete now, but back then (laughs) it was the Nikon D90 and it had HD video capability on it. So at the same time that I was playing around with photo, I was also playing around with video. Hmm. So I just kind of embraced both of them. I've been, you know, shooting both ever since I started. So for weddings and events, what I offer is a highlight video. So there's a bunch of different terms for it in the industry. Some people call it a wedding trailer, short form edit, uh, wedding highlight. There's like a ton of different names for it, but it's usually the same thing. So for me, it's a six to 12 minute video. And it combines the video footage, audio from the day, and music. And it just kind of summarizes the whole day. And it's short enough to hold people's attention. So generally, it's like 6 to 12 minutes. That's like the sweet spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And then I also, for couples that book me for a video, in addition to um, engagement photo shoot, I also do video at that shoot. So for the same reason that, yeah, for the same reason that photographers offer engagement photos, it allows, you know, couples to get practice posing in front of the camera, get to know each other. Um, but I also like to do video for that because it gives them some practice, like posing for video. It's ever so slightly different. Like, I guess like the poses and the motions have to be a little more fluid. So, yeah. yeah. And then they can also like use that video for something. So some people put it on their uh, like wedding website, like on one of the pages there. And then I actually had a couple play that video at their wedding at the actual reception. So, yeah. Oh, wow. That's really neat. Wow. <laughs> so, so you've had video as a part of your business the entire time you had your business. Yeah. Oh, so okay, the cool. very first wedding I shot, I shot it alone. Okay. <laughs> there was no second shooter. And you did both? And I did, yeah. I oh did. my gosh. I don't know how. I just, <laughs> I was really ambitious. Yeah. It was, I don't even know. That's, yeah. That's, Looking back on that, I have no idea how that was possible, but yes, I did. Wow. That's amazing. I love yeah. it. <laughs> that's really cool. So I got it. Um, so if you, uh, for people that uh, uh, are looking into this to, to book you, um, what, are, what are some of the, the pros or the um, advantages of couples booking you, someone like you versus someone that's uh, two like, separate companies, yeah. like a yeah. like photo interview? <clears throat> so there's actually a bunch of pros. I highly recommend it to like all couples out there <laughs> yeah. uh, doing all their wedding planning. So the first and foremost is you save money this way. So it's mm-hmm. generally always cheaper to book photo and video with the same company rather than two separate companies. Right. But it also makes life a lot easier when you're like hunting for vendor vendors and you're uh, booking vendors. So generally photo and video, they're both visual mediums. So if you like someone's photo style, you're Mm -hmm. probably going to like their video style. Like for me, my photography is kind of light and airy, shallow depth of field, like, you know, Mm -hmm. and my videos have pretty much the exact same aesthetic. Mm -hmm. So it saves you that step of having to look for another videographer. So once you find a photographer, if they shoot video, you just book them together and it saves you one more step. Um, And that also means one less vendor that you have to like work with. So less emails back and forth, contracts, um, invoices, you know, all that booking stuff. Right, right. 
Yeah. yeah. And then in terms of the day of experience, so this is actually like the biggest point in my mind. So mm-hmm. when you're working with two different teams, so a photography team and a video team, mm-hmm. it can mm-hmm. sometimes feel like the bride and groom have to be kind of shared mm-hmm. <laughs> between yep. both the photographer and the video. This so is where like the true. whole uh, yeah. stigma of like photographers not liking videographers right. and my source. It doesn't have to be that way, but right. <laughs> I feel like it's easy to, I don't know. It's just, it's tough to have to share. Mm-hmm. Like you only have a certain like timeline throughout the day to get the shots that both teams want. So if you have two separate teams, you know, the bride and the groom have to wait for each team to set up the shot they want, yeah. get the shot, get a couple takes and then move on. So it wastes a little bit of time that way. And then also just, I feel like mentally, I wouldn't know cause I have never been a bride, but I feel like if I were in that position, it would just like feel stressful being instructed by so many people and having to like redo things. And so, yeah. I just feel like it simplifies things a lot to do it this way. Yeah, it's so true. I was at a, a wedding recently. I don't mean to cut you off, but I have to tell the no, story because it's funny. But I was actually second shooting and then there was an assistant there as well. So there was three photographers and mm-hmm. then there was also three people on the video team. <laughs> oh my gosh. And yeah. And so there was six people doing photography and video at this wedding and the bride and groom were like, what is happening <laughs> like i mean yeah, I think, I i'm sure they like it. knew that that was going to happen but like it didn't really register until they're like standing there in the middle of a field and there's six people surrounding them you Paparazzi know trying style. yeah 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 it's like yeah. is this a photo shoot or right like <laughs> and the groom even like kind of under his breath to me was like i didn't realize there was going to be so many people here like this is kind of <laughs> weird <laughs> i completely agree like yeah. when if you're a bride just planning your wedding you don't like take those things into account like how many physical bodies you're right. Right. right exactly or like yeah. or having to like move people around like to different locations yeah. and having to wait for people or you know yeah. if people are driving from one place to another like right. it can get kind of crazy yeah. i think <laughs> i agree and also like during the ceremony if you have six people yeah. standing yeah. in the aisle oh my that's not fun for the guests like yeah. that blocks everyone's oh view my gosh. it's just everyone's and everyone else's shot it's just yeah, yeah. So the true. less people the more simplified you can be the better experience on the day i think yes yeah. Yeah. i totally totally agree with you <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. That's amazing. So. so there's definitely a lot of pros for yes. for couples to Absolutely. book um uh I guess an all in one resource. Yeah. I guess you would call it. Yeah. That's for great. sure. And it's interesting too, but from my experience, um with booking brides, you know, a lot of times they ask, you know, um, <laughs> do you do you either know any videographers that you can recommend that you work well with because it's oh, yeah. so just out Stay there. Point. You want to work well with that, them. <laughs> that, that photographers and videographers like hate each other for some reason, you know, which is really interesting because yeah. I've only really had yeah. positive interactions with most videographers. Yeah. But, yeah, um, me too. It's, it's just like a myth that everyone is, I don't know. <laughs> right. Yeah. It happens. I won't lie. It happens every once in a while, but yeah. the goal is for that not to happen. Yeah. <laughs> but it definitely makes it easier on the couple. For sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay. So uh, what would you say to some photographers that are listening right now uh, that have been kind of convinced that this is something they really want to do and they want to start offering video? Uh, what would be the kind of the first, um, like the first steps to take on uh, today to get that uh, introduced in video into their, their business? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for me, it is a no brainer. Like if you're a photographer, you already have half of the skills completely mastered. So the whole visual aspect of That's videography true. and yeah. photo, it completely overlaps. So right. yeah. exposure, you already know about ISO and like gradiness and how that works. Aperture, depth of field, yeah. white balance is the same. Composition is the same. Framing mm-hmm. and also the equipment. You have pretty much the main part of the equipment that you need is the camera itself. So most pro DSLR cameras nowadays have HD video capability. Mm. So it almost makes me like sad, like for all the photographers <laughs> out there, like you have it at your fingertips. Like, like I totally recommend yeah. looking into it. It's probably so, a button on their camera that they've never even touched. Right. But it's like, yeah, it's just like, oh, switch to video that. and it's, it's right there. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. I wonder if some of that is because, you know, and I see, I don't know what kind of, you know, um, hand if you use i don't even know what they're called those uh oh yeah you know where stabilizers yeah the, like stabilizers yeah. i don't yeah. know if maybe photographers feel a little like i need something like that you know mm-hmm. because you know if you hand hold a video it might be kind of shaky right. um and maybe they're just intimidated by the equipment i don't know that's mm. a good question right yeah yeah i feel like that's 
I feel like that's probably the biggest part. So yeah. you do have half the equipment, but in order to do video well, you do need some extra things. So True. lighting, first of all, mm. you can't use flash in a video, obviously. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that would look weird. You, I mean, you could, I yeah. guess, but it would look weird. <laughs> it would yeah. look like lightning or something. <laughs> so it, you need to learn either to master natural light and get really good at that, or you can get video lights. So they have like LED lights or constant lights. And then audio, audio, I would say is like the biggest mm. um, learning curve that you have to really take some time to learn. So if you have really great audio, it just takes the video to a whole other level. Um, so we, what I use is lot. Mm -hmm, but we definitely know about yeah, the, you about the audio, audio struggle <laughs> I just say, with the podcast. I think oh you gosh. guys would make the ideal candidates to get into video. Oh my gosh. Just <laughs> We've had enough trouble just figuring out oh. the audio for the podcast. Jeez. I don't know if we could do that. <laughs> <laughs> So what I use for my audio is LAVs. They're um, like lavalier microphones. They clip on. They're super small. Um, they clip on to yeah. – I put them on um, the groom's lapel and then the officiant. And then I also have the standalone recorders. I use Zoom H1s, and then they get um, audio from like the ceremony and the speeches and everything. It just hooks up to the DJ. Super easy. Um, and then the last part, like you said, I guess what most photographers are afraid of is stabilizers. Right. So. You can use a tripod for like ceremony and speeches. Tripod is the way to go for sure. But then the rest of the day you can use like a monopod and there's these super duper fancy they get. There's like, that's a whole yeah. other world. Yeah, right. <laughs> there's like gimbals <laughs> and uh, stabilizers. And then if you want to get really fancy, you can get um, dollies and tracks and like sliders. Those are like for those fancy panning shots and stuff. Right. So yeah, but really the main things are lighting, unless you're just really good at using natural light and then audio. So those are the two. Um, biggest things you have to take some time to learn. And then obviously this probably goes without saying, but hiring another person. So right. like I said, it's not possible to shoot a wedding alone photo and video, but it would be pretty hard. I very, very highly recommend two to three shooters. Yeah. For so sure. what I have, what I call it, I nickname it two and a half shooters. <laughs> so <laughs> what I mean by that is that all day long I have two shooters. So myself as one of them. And then I have a whole bunch of second shooters that know both photo and video. So for groom prep and bride prep, we get all the shots we want on photo, and then we just get them again on video. And then I have a third additional shooter who comes just for midday, who is dedicated solely to do video. Okay. So for the ceremony, they're focusing on like the ring exchange, the kiss. Um, for reception, they're uh, focusing on entrances, rings, cake cutting, all the things that can't be repeated. They're, you know, that's what their focus is. So all our bases are covered the whole day long. And then the rest of the night, they usually go home after cake cutting the rest of the night we can the two of us can totally handle the whole rest of the night dancing and then i handle all the audio the whole day so that's no one else has to worry about that and then i do all the final editing on the video so everything looks cohesive i just get everyone's footage and edit it all together myself okay cool, cool. do you just a caveat question do you have uh, do you do like a same day um like a, a video sometimes or is that something you've looked into <laughs> No, I find that trend so fascinating. <laughs> I know, <laughs> me too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Being a guest at weddings and seeing it, like I went to a wedding with my boyfriend. He's like, why don't you offer that? You have to offer that. It's so cool. It's I'm so like, hard. <laughs> it is cool, but how? How on yeah. earth do these people do it? I would love to know how they do it. I have no idea. I yeah. don't offer that because I have no idea how I would do that. <laughs> All right. We're getting yeah. somebody on the well, podcast yeah, to talk say, about it. We need to find somebody. <laughs> so if you're Ask out there, someone, I want to know. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So if you're out there and I'm you, uh, it. you know it, you know how to do that, yeah. then let us know. We'll interview uh, you for the podcast. Matt Kennedy. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Right. I'll ask okay. him. Wait, I have, I have a caveat question too. This oh. is much more technical than probably is necessary, but I'm just curious. <laughs> so you're, so say you're doing like portraits, right. And you are doing photo and video. Um, are like, and you have a person with you. So are you doing like photo and the other person's doing video? Are you going back and forth between photo and video, like on your same camera? A uh, little bit of both. Okay. So while I'm like posing them and shooting, I'll like get the shot I want on photo. And while I'm doing all that stuff, my second shooter. So at that point of the day, I usually, it's the three of us. So right. two, two side angles are like plenty. Got it. Um, so yeah, both of them will be getting like candid, um, like side angles, especially, uh, during like portraits and family when I'm like, okay, now everyone look at each other, talk to each other. I love those like side shots on the video. Um, but yeah, I'll, while I'm shooting, like, especially the bride and groom portraits, I'll just like, after I'm getting my photos, I'll be like, okay, wait, do that again one more time, nice and slow. And I'll just like flip right over to video and yeah, got it. It's okay. just uh, super, cool. super fast to flip between photo and video. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. I wasn't, okay. yeah, I was like trying to envision what that looked like during the day. And so thanks for, yeah, 
Yeah. It's that. very like the couples, honestly, like sometimes they're just like, I don't know when you got that video footage. Like right. it, you seriously can't tell. It's literally the tiniest little switch on the back of the camera between yeah. photo and video. Yeah. It's super seamless. Yeah. Yeah. yeah awesome. And your exposure mm-hmm. would stay the same if you're already like <clears throat> dialed in. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, actually, at least on my camera, I have a Nikon D750. It's, yeah. I think it's like independent. So like you can have a different oh. ISO, everything. It, yeah. Oh, I'm pretty over. sure the setting. Right? Interesting. I'll yeah. check that out and see. Yeah. Hmm. Cool. Interesting. Okay. Well, why do you love uh, shooting both video and uh, the photo? The, why do you love shooting both? Yeah. So for me, I think it's the best way for a photographer to create additional income, mm-hmm. another income stream without having to take on a totally different career path. Yeah. Of course, like you can always just get a random different, you know, right. whatever side job you want. But if you want to, like maximize your potential as a photographer. Yeah. It is the easiest like side job that you can jump into. Yeah. It also opens like if you offer photo and video, it op- opens the possibility to almost double your income for mm-hmm. the exact same number of bookings you have. Mm-hmm. So you obviously can't be at two different weddings on one given Saturday. Yeah. So this is kind of like a way you can double dip your income hmm. without having to be in two places yeah. at once. <laughs> yeah. Um, And then another really cool just like added benefit is that you can use all the video knowledge that you learn to make videos for yourself. So what I'm currently trying to make (laughs) time to do. (laughs) Yeah. Like you can, what I'm working on now is making a video trailer. So you can basically just use the video knowledge that you use for your clients, but use it for yourself. So for video advertisements, just, I guess, really nicely produced uh, Instagram stories, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, And what I've been hearing a lot lately is that video ads um, especially on like Facebook and Instagram, yeah. get a lot better engagement than just a regular still photo. Right. So yeah, Absolutely. video can be a total game changer in terms of your advertising too. Yeah. yeah. It's the wave of the future. It is. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> is there anyone who it's not right for like to do both? Do you think, or um, what are your I've thoughts heard like, again, everyone who asked me like, how do you do both? Like, the main things I hear is that people are like, oh, I, I can't like compartmentalize. Like I can't be shooting photo and video. Like I don't know how to switch between the two in my head. Mm. For me, it's never been an issue because like I said, I learned them both together. So to me, it's not like switching like mindsets. It's just like, ooh, that shot will look great in photo. Ooh, let me get that again in video. Or mm. ooh, something's waving in the wind. That'll look much better on video than photo. So for me, it's not just like like A and B, like video and then photo, they kind of really work well together in my mind. But yeah. I know some people out there, they just, they need to think of things separately. Um, yeah. yeah. Honestly, that's really the only I feel like main Instagram, thing that I I feel like Instagram is training us <laughs> to do still fit up photos and, and video like with combined, stories. Yeah. With stories. Mm-hmm. Very good point. We're right. already starting to do that. So it's already starting to train us to do that. So that's. Yeah, that is really true. That's true when you, yeah, what you say, because, um, like boomerangs, you know, you always want to get like motion in a boomerang. Like it would make sense to do a boomerang if something just sitting still. Right. It's kind of (laughs) weird. That wouldn't make any sense. Um, yeah, that's really interesting. I I didn't think about that. that. Yeah, but I can, I can see how maybe that could be a little (laughs) difficult to like go back and forth between, you know, thinking of what, you know, and it's interesting too, because a lot of people who like, um, teach on like posing and stuff always say you know that you want to have your people moving you want to incorporate movement mm-hmm. which is something i think a lot of photographers right. don't actually think of when they're right. shooting they they're you know so concerned with getting people into like an actual you know still shot right that they're not right it looks of. more natural when there's a little little it bit does. of like motion yeah. And fluidity and stuff. yeah yeah and so thinking through that from a video perspective yeah that's really interesting yeah mm-hmm. cool that's really awesome yeah. awesome cool um, oh, I got this one. What? You got it. I got it. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, back when you first started your business, we're going to take it back a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. what was the, what was the hardest thing for, you know, kind of starting? Cause you didn't have, I mean, you didn't have a photography business first. You had mm-hmm. photography and video first, right? So, which is a little different than right. most people. So what was the biggest struggle you had to get over when you yeah, first started? This is, yeah, this is still my biggest struggle. Yeah. <laughs> higher, I feel like it will be my biggest issue till the end of time. Yeah, right. <laughs> but hiring second shooters and assistants, mm. the first part of that being like finding enough second yeah. shooters and assistants. Like, I feel like I just constantly need a bigger list of people I can go to. Yeah. So I feel okay. like when most of us start our businesses, we're like, Oh, like it's a 
I'm a single proprietor. It's a single owner LLC. Like it's going to be just me. Right. Right. But we quickly learned that, especially if you're a wedding photographer, you can't do it alone. Like you are always going to need a second shooter, sometimes a third shooter. So what really helped me get over that was first and foremost was joining networking groups. So um, there's a lot of online groups. I think I'm a member of probably every single (laughs) New Jersey, New York, like a photographer, videographer group that there is. I can't even count. There's probably like at least 10. Um, And then Rising Tide Society. I know Cinema, you're a member, the Tuesdays Together group. They're super awesome. It's a great way to meet lots of peers in your industry Mm -hmm. and like build up a huge list of people that you could go to whenever you need someone because you're always going to need someone. Yeah. And what also really helped me was creating really thorough, really detailed second shooter guidelines. So Mm -hmm. the one I give to my second shooters is like three or four pages long. (laughs) Uh, It just like it helps them like know exactly like what they're expected to do. Like I put in tons of like tips, technical tips, just I make it really easy for them to just like knock it out of the park. And they always do. (laughs) Yeah. And that's so Um, helpful, too, because I mean, I've done a lot of second shooting for people and it is so helpful to have as much information as possible from the primary shooter because you want to do a good job for them and you want to do a good job for their, for, you know, whatever their client's expecting. And I think a lot of times some primary shooters just like, are like, Oh, I'm sure you'll do a good job. And it's like, "Ah, I need to know like what you're looking for because yeah, yeah, even though like I may approach a a wedding day a certain way, like that Mm -hmm. primary shooter may approach it a little bit differently and want, you know, a little bit of a different, results and so mm-hmm. if that communication isn't happening at the beginning yeah. that's a problem <laughs> right so yeah. yeah I do a lot of second shooting as well and every photographer I work for is a little bit different like people right. like different types of shots they like different types of settings just yeah when you know exactly what the person's expecting of you it's easy to do it exactly <laughs> if you don't know you have to like try to read their mind or like really study their work or yeah, yeah. it just makes it so much easier having a nice detailed like guideline. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's not fun to guess. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So speaking of which I have a freebie for your listeners. If they want to, they want to take a peek at what I send to all my second shooters. Awesome. I have a sample of my second shooter guideline. I have one for photo and video and then photo and video. That's awesome. Um, yeah. And that'll be at com slash focus. Oh, sweet. Awesome. So it's a freebie download for them. Yeah. Um, and I will put that link in the show notes as well. So I was just going to ask, like this should be something I'm sure photographers, like, cause I even had the thought, like Mm -hmm. if I'm trying to find a second shooter Mm -hmm. and I want to, I want to give them some tips and tricks and a guideline, how do I even start? Right, right, right. So having this, Mm -hmm. that's, that's perfect. That's really cool that you're willing to share Mm -hmm. that. Don't recreate the wheel. Right. I love that. I have a quick question about, um, you know, second shooters and assistants. Is it ever a plan in your future to like hire like full time employees to come work for you to do to do that? Or what do you think? What are your thoughts on that? I'm not opposed to it. I've just found that every time like I find a second shooter I love and like we work really great together, they want to start their own business. So like. I like as much as I would love to hire them, like they want to do their own thing. They want to have their own business. Yeah. So if I ever found someone who was willing, like, oh yeah, I would totally hire them. Yeah. But yeah. Find them I when feel like young. As, <laughs> you get to find yeah. them when they're young and then train them and then sign them to a contract yeah. <laughs> and a non-disclosure act at the end. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Go ruthless on them. Go straight lawyer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're locked in for five years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a hundred dollars a wedding. Right. <laughs> What? Oh man! Oh my God! Don't sign that contract. <laughs> Some kids will do it on a heartbeat. That's and they'll true. be like, "Yes," and then they'll quickly realize, like, ah, that was a bad choice. It's a bad choice. So don't do that. That's unethical. Do that. Possibly, <laughs> possibly illegal. Yes, maybe. Illegal. <laughs> oh man! Oh man! All right. So okay. So uh, can you give us a a, a good like throw or three tools um, or systems used for business uh, for the listeners? Yes. All right. So there's a lot more than three for sure. (laughs) But the three, I guess, the ones I'm trying to think of that not, I guess, I mean, I'm sure everyone has heard these, but my favorite right now is Tailwind for Mm. scheduling specifically Pinterest posts. I know they also do Instagram, but I use it specifically for Pinterest. So I love the layout, super easy to use, and it makes it easy for me to just sit down and do all of my Pinterest scheduling in batches. So instead of like 
spending five minutes every day. I just like take one afternoon, spend two hours and schedule them for like weeks and weeks. Oh, that's awesome. Kill one. Awesome. Okay, Kill perfect. One. We will yeah. link that in the show notes. What else do you got? And it's free. I'll add that. Even better. And there's a there's a paid version, but the kind I use right now, I think it's like a hundred posts is free and then you pay after that. But oh, well, I'm sure one day I'll hit that. But at least for your first hundred, it's yeah, super easy. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, and then the second one is blog stop. So okay. I think a bunch of photographers know of this one. It makes mm. blogging so much quicker because yep. you can make your diptychs. So yep. most blogs, they have to be like horizontal, like a certain dimension. So you can just super quickly put those diptychs together. Saves a lot of time. Mm. And then I also have a different template that I use for Pinterest posts because Pinterest, it looks best um, when it, they're like vertical photos. Right. Yep. So that makes that super quick as well. Yes, I love blog stamp. It's one of my favorite tools ever. Yeah. Love I it. like it took me forever to like learn that it even existed. And then once it did, I'm like, oh my yeah. gosh, like how did I not know about this? Sooner? How did I not know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last one, it's a little weird. It's not technically like photo related, yeah. but stamps.com. Oh. So, tell us yeah. more. <laughs> So basically it's like, I think it's just through USPS or whatever, but it's like online postage purchasing. So I basically never go to the post office anymore. So anytime I have to send something out, so like client packages, flash drives, even like stuff between my second shooters and myself, I just weigh the stuff at home. I have like a little food scale, (laughs) but it works great for mail as well. And then just, I put in the weight on the little website and then it calculates the um, exact postage and then you print out like it's like a little, I guess, QR, like barcode type thing. Uh-huh. You just put like they provide you with the labels. You put in your printer and it prints the postage oh. and you just put it in the mailbox. You don't have to wait in line at the post office, oh my <laughs> which gosh. for me, I've my post this. office yeah. has the longest line the entire day. So yeah. if I can avoid it, I avoid it at all costs. I was at the post office today. So <laughs> yeah. this sounds really good to me. <laughs> We've, uh, I've heard this on the podcast. Yeah, too. I've heard like, ads for it. They say, you know, your first uh, whatever, and it comes with a free scale and all this stuff. So oh, yeah. I think it's um, there's an offer out there somewhere. Maybe we can. Yeah. Find it. I'll I don't find, know. Yeah, I, I don't know. But yeah. Awesome. Yeah. They'll Very have to cool. sponsor us to, to put this on. I know, so. right? <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to send them an email. <laughs> yeah. So what's on the horizon for you? Like what's coming up? Yeah. So, oh my goodness. Every minute I am not editing. I am working on putting together a workshop. So oh, it's fun. Like my first oh. super comprehensive like photo businessy workshop. Awesome. So it's geared towards photographers in like the first couple years of their business or people who are thinking of starting a business. Okay. Um, basically just like how to jumpstart your business, how to set it up the right way, like legally, all about like the business stuff, like LLCs, bookkeeping, all the setup stuff, and then like some technical tips and basically just taking everything I learned in my eight years of like, like yeah. high school, college, business, everything I've learned from school, and then everything I've learned just by doing yeah. and just putting it all together in a big workshop. Awesome. Yeah. So that's going to be... I think it's going to be November 19th. Okay. I think that's oh. a Sunday. Very cool. And, that's and it's gonna... down at the Jersey Shore. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it's in person at the Jersey Shore. Yes. And yeah. who doesn't want to go to the Jersey Shore? Right. Jersey Especially Shore in November. Awesome. It's be and awesome. it's at a tea shop. So there's going to be endless oh, tea and scones. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. And there's <laughs> Sign a, me up now. What, where's, what's the link for that that people can go check out? Yeah. So that, that whole like part of my business, it's all at lynnperneleducation.com. So L-I-N-P-E-R-N-I-L-L-E education.com. Awesome. I will link that in the show notes as well. Awesome. Fantastic. Cool. So where can people find you? Online. Yep. Online. So my <laughs> main not, website. Not your home address. Not creepily at your home. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> like, we know she's in Jersey somewhere. <laughs> Tell us where. <laughs> <laughs> so online I am at lynnpernil.com so like I said l-i-n-p-e-r-n-i-l-l-e.com that's okay. all my photo and video stuff and then on social media super easy on every every single handle is just Lynn Pernil. I am most, yeah I'm most active on Instagram and then I'm also on Snapchat Pinterest and then Vimeo is where I put most of my like formal like wedding and event videos and then youtube is where i have like my educational stuff like tutorials lessons presentations and all that stuff nice well done fantastic i will link to all of that in the show notes as well so people can just find those things super easy and i'm sure they're all on your website too but yep yep um, everything pretty much comes from the website yeah that's amazing well lynn this has been so fantastic yeah I, I want to do video. I'll, yeah, he. I can gonna, see it in his eyes. Yeah. He's like, okay, it's time to do video. I'm going to find that button to switch it from photo to video. I'm sure it's on there somewhere. I He's going to go it. and play with the camera tonight. I can almost guarantee it. I definitely it. Yeah. Yeah. I 
totally recommend it. <laughs> do you have Do you have drones too? Do you do drones? No. No. Okay. Because oh. he's I always like, look, he's looking at the drones. Yeah. Like yeah, really they're cool. very very cool, but I feel like I would only use it for one shot. Right. Like it would be like the yeah. intro shot, and that yeah. would be it. Yeah, yeah. It's so true. If like, anything, I would like hire out like just like hire right. someone to just. Yeah. You know, be my drone person and just do that one shot and then go home but yeah, yeah. yeah. not yet I don't offer that yet it's always kind of creepy too when they're when they're hanging out up there and it's like <laughs> yeah. and like, you can why? hear it and it's like what is that do we and, look at it do we not it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so creepy true. Right? yeah <laughs> haven't quite decided how I feel about drones yet <laughs> We used to have one that came over our backyard in our old house. Yeah. And it would just, just come and like sit above our backyard. Our and we're like, oh what's going on, bro? And it felt very Are weird. Are you just checking us out or what? Yeah. It was like, this is not right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he maybe just in some aerial shots of his property to yeah. try and sell his property. Or yeah, he who just, knows? He's looking at the sky. Or, or he's who just, knows? just a super creep. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Super <laughs> creep. <laughs> cool. Well, this has been so great. Thank you so much for um, sharing all your knowledge with us. Um, I I feel like I still have like a hundred questions, know, but right? we might have to bring you back to talk about more of them. Yeah. Um, if I ever do same day edits, that will be the next. There topic. you go. There you go. I love it. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> very cool. Well, thank you again so much, and I will link all this in the show notes, and um, we will talk to you very soon. Awesome. All right. Thank all right. Thanks, Lynn. No problem. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening to this episode of Focus Podcast. Find us online at cinnamonwolf.co, where you can find all episodes of this podcast, as well as tons of other resources to help you grow your business. Don't forget to check out the supply closet while you're there. If you're listening on iTunes, don't forget to subscribe and leave us a rating. It helps others find the show. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you next time. Yeah. At this exact time last week, my upstairs neighbor forgot to turn off his sink. So his apartment was... Yeah, and it started like Jeez. seeping through my ceiling, and I was like, "What is going on?" That's like a thing yeah. that happens, huh? I thought that only <laughs> happened in the movies, right? I was like, "Oh yeah, I guess there's always the risk of that, huh?" Oh my gosh! So, yeah. what do you even do about that? Like, how do you? I immediately was just like, I called my super. He's like super nice. Super